Hello again, this is Ben Hitchcock Cross Talking. I just uh, want to do a few things here. We've got, I want to compare the artistry of this band here from uh, uh, Birmingham, the minor uh, high school band. Uh, we all know him from this video. That's Mr. Mims, their director. Uh, but I want to compare their artistry here. Um, and we can let that go in the background here. Here's what I want to talk about. Um, and first of all, anybody who's saying, hey, let's put these cops in prison, I think um, a better and fitting thing would make them, you know, carry the sousaphones, carry the flags to the, the drums to the bus. Maybe they should learn how to play the sousaphone. Maybe they grow spiritually as a result. Um, because I'd like to focus here on the law. I'd like to focus on what that says about uh, who can be arrested and why. Um, and I want to focus on, uh, again, the educators that make this possible and the artistry. Because I, I frankly, when I compare this to what's going on in the football field, I find this to be more impressive. That's me. Um, you may have other views. Hey, but look at that. Can you get a hundred high school students to do that? I mean, I don't think there's a comparable marching band in Wisconsin. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Certainly not in high school. And these are not uh, affluent students by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but they're putting their all into this. This is pretty impressive. Let's see, we got some more here. Here's them playing SOS, the theme song here. I've got probably five videos of this. And thanks for those who taught me about the, the commas and the, the, the periods there. Um, I, again, this song is three minutes. Two minutes, 41 seconds. Come on, people. They can do their thing. They clearly have been working hard for this. Okay? All right. Now this is uh, the marching in here. And this just kind of wants to show you how the level of what's going on. They've got, I mean, they've got these little kids. They've got kids uh, marching here. They're going, I mean, here are the bigger guys. They've got dance troops. I mean, this is a, look at this. This is a whole thing. And look at the spirit, like everybody's in there. I just can't tell you how awesome that is. Very likely they can't afford a feathery plume for everybody, but they're including everybody and that's awesome. That, this is an awesome organization. Um, then there's something else I want to show you here. This is entitled the Columbia versus Minor High School at the 2022 Rocket City Band Brawl. Okay? And this is band versus band going against each other just like they're doing in the, the fifth uh, quarter there. Uh, there's dance troupe versus dance troupe. They have a whole separate video of dance troupe versus dance troupe uh, with the tuba. They've got uh, drum bands versus drum bands. I mean, this is going to knock your socks off. There's Mr. Mims here. Look at those kids. Come on. That's an athletic feat to be able to dance like that and then come play your clarinet. And look at the look at how they're all holding uh, the same angle. That's Mr. Mim. All right. <laughs> well, I want to show you this here because uh, this, I think, is sort of sums up the competitive nature that so much of uh, what's lost in here. But we're seeing culture. We're seeing culture. Uh, and I think it needs to be honored and respected. Let's look at this from the lens of an artist, okay? If the artist was the arts and culture were the most important things, and some say they should be, um, this takes precedence over 
going home for the night. This takes precedence over waking up on Friday morning. This takes precedence over the police having to go to bed. Uh, this art, culture, and uh, these children's performance should take precedence. Now, here what I'm going to remind this is in white and red is the Columbia High School, and in purple and white is our guys from Minor. And um, we're going to see, notice the symbols uh, sort of clashing here. Uh, let's get right to it. Okay, pretty awesome, pretty awesome. But the key thing is, look how there's going to be a, not only a back and forth, but a sort of a interaction between the two bands, okay? Like it's Mardi Gras. This is art. Uh, this is amazing. This is just that's what I wanted to share on that. Um, really, something fantastic for everybody here. Um, so uh, let's go back to our old friends uh, Baldwin and uh, see what we can learn from that. Um, if you'll recall, the last time that we were looking at Baldwin, we were talking about Officer uh, Frank Kowiak, if you remember. And Officer Frank Kowiak, of course, had this problem where uh, he wanted uh, the court jester to move along. Remember what I'm talking about here? Okay. Now, the first issue was all um, the, do they have the First Amendment right here to, um, is this them being arrested basically for moving along, is that a violation of their free speech? And did Frank Kowiak have in his mind the concept to violate the free speech? Okay, so we talked about that. But now we're gonna get here into this, now turn to the second issue, which is whether Frank Kowiak had uh, a probable cause to arrest Brown. So that's a big issue that a lot of people are asking about in the comments is, you know, is this a lawful arrest to stop the band leader? Okay. Doesn't the band leader get a second chance to get his stuff? Um, like, sh so there's no question they shouldn't be asking that. There's no question that the police chief should have extreme pressure, if not um, direct consequences, from the mayor because the mayor should get direct consequences from the people. Okay. There's no question that's how things should work. But let's just talk about those officers and what they, what do they have the power to do what they did? I think the answer is yes. You may disagree with me, no problem. I'm going with uh, Wisconsin law, Seventh Circuit here. We can look at what they say. The disorderly conduct is pretty much the same uh, in Alabama. If you want to look at it, it says a person commits disorderly conduct, public inconvenience, annoyance, or alarm, or recklessly creating a risk thereof. Jeez Louise. Okay. I mean, so really anything. Okay. Was Mr. Mims doing that? I mean, am I doing that now? I mean, are you doing that? Okay. So, uh, the ordinance under which Brown was arrested provides that no person shall engage in violent, abusive, indecent, profane, boisterous, and reasonably loud or otherwise disorderly conduct under circumstances in which such conduct tends to cause or provoke a disturbance. Bam, that's Wisconsin's Milwaukee Code. Uh, and then there's the statute, 947. All right. 
Fran Kowiak testified in his deposition that Brown was abusive, boisterous, and unreasonably loud. This testimony is disputed by other witnesses, including Brown, and so cannot be taken as true in the current posture of the case. So they're just that uh, motion to dismiss is what I'm still guessing. So all facts go to against where Frank Kowiak that can go against him. But that leaves the catch-all of otherwise disorderly. Okay. It's not contended that Brown was violent, indecent, or profane. We must consider whether his conduct in refusing to explain to the officer why he was taking a picture of him geez, and instead threatening to sue him and then refusing to step aside to continue his argument with the officer when ordered to do so created probable cause in a courthouse seething with rumor of disturbance to believe that his, uh, well, that he was being disorderly in circumstances in which his behavior could provoke or exacerbate a disturbance. All right. Bearing in mind the emphasis that Wisconsin's highest court places on the coalescence of conduct with circumstances in deciding whether conduct is disorderly. All right. <laughs> Good for them. Uh, Oak Creek versus King. We think there was a probable cause for Brown's arrest. Here's the, here's the kicker. The altercation took place in a courthouse lobby during work hours. It is conceded that other persons besides Brown and Courier were officers were present. The other persons who can be assumed to have had business in the courthouse and for who, and who, for all that Frank, uh, Frank Kowiak could have known, might have been witnesses or jurors. These persons would have observed this strange spectacle rendered stranger by Courier's antics. A strange spectacle. Strange spectacle. Now, plus like 10,000 points for alliteration, especially the hard C's and the S's. Fantastic. Uh, however, um, you can see a strange spectacle to behold uh, is otherwise disorderly, as far as I can tell. That is the flavor of what I'm getting. Things are headed. Uh, a strange spectacle rendered stranger by Courier's antics of bronze photographing. Uh, photographing a police officer and refusing to explain why threatening to sue him and refusing his orders to step outside the lobby. This co conduct disturbed the sedate, ironic, dignified, solemn, and even hieratic Temple of Justice ambiance the courthouse seeks to preserve. All right, so big difference here is move along. Now there's a repeated once on, uh, on in favor of the police. Now in big favor of Mims is he's at a concert saying, hey, um... You know, this is what people do. Uh, now, again, it's the sort of... The thing here is... The, what, remember what the officer said is... You were disrespecting me. Okay? And so, in here, just look at this logic here, which is the strange spectacle. Okay? Now, is the officer's conduct and Mims's sort of the... Whoever escalated it, is Mim's conduct looking at itself, is that creating a strange spectacle? Okay, I mean, we can say that certainly in retrospect because, you know, so many people have seen it, uh, but that's the question. Now, again, we got to give him, it's not a courthouse. That This reasoning in here says, you know, different story, it's a courthouse. It's, but look, it's just refusal, threatening to sue. Those are all points against... Uh, courier uh, uh, and brawn okay you know the jet I mean it's uh, let's keep going it is not a case of a person who accosted on the street by a policeman who has no reason to suspect of unlawful behavior refuse to answer the policeman's question as he's entitled to do okay I mean that we did get that it's just a case of refusing to move on oh my Goodness. Uh, bronze attack occurred after the catastrophic bombing of a federal building in Oklahoma in 95, engendered heightened fears for the security of government buildings. I mean, that's pretty attenuated in my opinion. Even before then, courthouses had been recognized as potentially dangerous places because of the presence of criminal defendants, bitterly divorcing spouses, etc. Because of the character of the courthouse's clientele and the importance of preserving calm, see that goes to the police, the uh, importance of preserving calm at the uh, arena, they've got to get kids home to bed, 
uh, you know, um, okay, uh, potential for drunk people in the stands, uh, violence to spill over, because there may have been violence before, who knows, um, students may have harmed other students, um, those are all factors going against MIMS. Because of the character of a courthouse's clientele, we saw that witnesses and jurors outside the league who never must play a vital role, okay, po wow, police and guards are entitled to exercise a degree of control that would be oppressive in a different setting, okay? Curious grotesque display, bronze picture taking, and obstinance, and the telephone warning about a disturbance in the courthouse taken all together justified a prudent officer in taking steps to head off possible trouble. Okay? Now, could you read this decision and they have the facts from, uh, you know, Mims, we'll say, and say, hey, I this doesn't say that Mims loses. I absolutely agree. But what this does say is that there's enough room, there's certainly enough wiggle room. I mean, the, the federal bombing in Oklahoma City that was brought up is, again, so attenuated, so distant, so unrelated, seemingly so to me, that uh, you would say, well, this, almost any factor, again, it's saying totality of the circumstances, it could give an officer, and we've seen a lot of what officers can do with the totality of the circumstances, to believe that they have probable cause or to, you know, to have a judge think that uh, their probable cause is warranted. Okay? So, again, I absolutely want to agree with people who are saying you have to have a, a, a police officer has to have a lawful reason to arrest you. Maybe different in your jurisdiction. I don't know. You may be able to resist with violence. Can't do that here. Uh, an unlawful arrest. In Wisconsin, you have to uh, succumb to an unlawful arrest nevertheless. May not be that way in your jurisdiction, like I'm saying. But uh, that is the law here. It's the Seventh Circuit. I mean, this is a pretty decent analysis as far as these things go. Um, so, again... Super wide, vague statutes like disorderly conduct, a probable cause, very low standard, and totality of the circumstances, which is going back, that's what this uh, Oak Creek versus King case says that that's how they interpret it in Wisconsin. Bearing in mind the emphasis that on the coalescence of conduct with the circumstances, okay, totality of the circumstances, that may be why it's a police officer's best friend is that these, uh, it's a very, very low, very low uh, bar to get to uh, an arrest. So you may be right, uh, and again, I want to quote uh, the Monkey King, uh, says, and this is paraphrasing here, that the, the judge may be wrong, the emperor may be wrong, but the magistrate, meaning the police officer, is never wrong, which sort of goes with the, the thinking of the Wisconsin uh Courts when they said, even on an unlawful arrest, you got to go with the police officer because uh, we have to have good order in society. You may not agree with that. So put a comment below. Appreciate everything uh, that you all do, um, and stick with us. Uh, we'll keep you informed.